We are back. 2023 NXO Windy City Major. Four stop on the tour. Matty Marshall up here with Drew Templeton. And it's Isaac Barrow for this set. About to go down. Tampa Bay damage taken on the Saints. And Houston Heat and Legion. Damage highly favored in this one. And they strike first. They try to get Keith Brown and Snake. He's getting checked out. Damage starting from the red side. Saints from the blue side. As the Saints are 0-3. Damage undefeated yesterday. And it looks like Keith Brown's good to go. So Keith Brown and Snake won. Still doubling up that back center for Tampa Bay. And they got five bodies alive, working in a five on four situation here currently. Keith Brown, the hummingbird, he sees the slow motion and from a bird's eye view. <laughs> Randy moving us, moving up the center there to the Goose Island. Keith's gonna do a little tactical retreat, get back to the uh, back of the snake, look towards that D side. Interesting to see what Tampa Bay is going to show here. Highly favored in this one, coming off a big win at the last event in the most dramatic fashion possible. They're going to get a kill back uh, corner bunker. But knowing that they're highly favored, I wonder if Joe's going to show his hand much. You know, is he going to have what sort of game plans he going to go? And, you know, because everyone's going to watch this game too. You know what I'm saying, Drew? Right, it's like 100%. And I, I, I haven't seen them play on this layout yet, but just kind of thinking of their personnel, you know, you've got Keith, who's a, you know, elite snake. Um, but back to that snake package, do they have three guys that can play it? You know, I don't know. Um, but, you know, they're undefeated so far, right? So Yeah, they're, they're I mean, it's Tampa Bay. It, they went yeah. about 10 years without a win, but Jesus, the past two years, they've been one of the top teams. Uh, second place at Cup, they just won the last event. They won in Texas last year. Um, but, you know, knowing that everyone's going to watch this game, knowing they're heavily favored, sure, they'd love a big blowout Mercy Rule win here, but I, I just don't think they need to show their hand much. Just kind of run a standard game plan, and if it's working, just keep running that. Keep the guys fresh. Don't get anybody hurt. Well, um, it's hard to glean anything, right? Because, like, it's the first place team against... The 20th like, ranked team. Yeah, so it's like, okay, what do we learn there? Are they going to do that against Dynasty? Yeah, and Damage's next match will be against the Hurricanes. And the way the Hurricanes are playing, and they have a very similar style as Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. So Tampa Bay will come out, and we just had Joey. Joey always it's like, oh, we're saying we play slow. I'm like, no, I say that you play fast until you get a lead, and then you definitely play slow. You're saying you don't. He's like, well, that's, that's the best way to do it, which he's totally right. Um, but so they will play a quicker brand of paintball in the beginning, and they will drop hammers, but they're like the worst team in the league to go down three or four points to. Yeah. because they just play that weight game so well. But the Hurricanes also play a similar style of paintball. So that could be a fun one. <laughs> it's the term, Matty, slow. You know, they don't like, the, they don't just, like that term. Yeah, Say controlled. Yeah, How about controlled. controlled, intelligent? Yeah. We'll take That's that. Methodical? Let's use Joey, will you take intelligent? How about that? Is that cool? <laughs> no, I love, I love Joey. Uh, so jump into this one. Now, this could be a battle here. Houston Heat, but Legion warmed up in a win. Legion's looking outstanding. Got to shut uh, Karslev down on that D side here. So it's going to be Moorhead and Dizon on the D side for Houston Heat. And then let's see if, you know, so no Chad George at this event. He's here, but hurt. Um, and Connor Kelly played really well in the snake. And Fedorov was also getting some, a lot of spins over here as well, too. But Fedorov's the first to come off. They do shoot a uh, player for uh, Legion trying to get into snake one. So four on four. Oh, they shoot uh, Karslev as well, too. So down to three bodies here for Legion. Seems sort of designed to have Mishka go up and do what he's doing right now, um, given that they lost Fedorov on the break, but it's paying off shooting that Dorito player. Yeah, so Mishka going up to this uh, the small wall here and just totally dedicated, it seems like, to that to that D side. But getting some communication, hey, we already shot cars left. Because if you're, if, and I know Houston Heat did their homework, if you're watching Legion play, you have to shut cars left down on that D side. Yeah, snake side, strong side, but the strong side for Legion is the D side with how well cars left and Kirill are playing over there. Yeah, I wanted to say it last match, but when you have such a snake dominant field that teams are only leaving maybe one guy over there, uh, aggressive, good Dorito players can take it. They, I mean, I think they thrive in those moments of taking advantage. Like, okay, you're gonna send four or three guys to that side. I'll take advantage and win, win this way. Looks like a hopper hit. Yeah, well, Miska, it look, it could be rubbed too. I mean, there's a referee right there staring at him. He's got some of it on his arm as well. But yes, from this angle, it does look like a hit, Isaac. I'd throw the penalty right here. <laughs> well, he's got the head ref staring at him. I think that's Big John staring at him as well, too. Sergey right. had, Sergey had the wedge popping the top over there, really committing, trying to get the angle on uh, Moorhead and Dizon. Russians in the snake now, Maddie. Yeah, they get uh, Alexander Burtnikov into snake one. No one in the snake with the early death of, of Fedorov. 
um, Houston Heat decided to send Mishka kind of this inside. But, but you know, Drew and Zizek, we are starting to see the tactics and the strategy evolve a little bit. It's not as, I wouldn't say, it wasn't really one-dimensional yesterday, but we're seeing d certain facets start to pop up. Um, the Goose Island brick is being used more. Um, this this bunker right here, the you know the mini wall, that's being used a lot more today as well too. So, just little small adjustments these teams have been making after watching and playing yesterday. Red Legion really likes that Dorito Tower cross and the snake too. I know people were saying that that was an effective shot at practices, and people were saying the shot was a little different here, uh, but they're 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 really liking that still. That allows players like Sergey to have these deep Dorito cuts waiting on Moorhead and Ronnie to move. Um, just makes it hard for the other team to be aggressive. And if you are tuning in on your social media networks, please head on over to GoSports.com. Watch the best paintball teams on planet Earth row down here, the Winnie City Major. As we are getting our way through the prelims here on Saturday, uh, Sergey taking the walk here for Legion, so down to just two bodies. Two on four situation here. High body moment for Heat. Ooh, a little trip and fall here for Kirill Britney, but picks it back up and stays alive, getting into the wedge, trying to shut down that D side, stop the attack. Ryan Moore at the 50 for Houston Heat. You can see I think Mishka wants to go get him. The battle on the D side. Here goes Dizon launching on your screen. He's going to run through and dices up Kirill. Malloy is screaming bloody murder that it was a penalty. It does look like a major is going to be called here on Houston Heat. Do they have the bodies to pull? Mishka is still alive. Tyler's still alive. I think Mishka traded with Britnikov, so I think it's going to be a no point. Yeah, but he's Mishka's going in there oh. at the buzzer. Yeah. Like, he's good to go. And then Tyler, I think, was pulled on the penalty. So they're going to have to assess a major penalty as two bodies come off. I didn't see if Moorhead was hit, so maybe he was pulled on that uh, that penalty. Point's good. It was interesting. So Malloy was screaming yeah. cross field that mm -hmm. he got the shot on Dizon when Dizon made that bi big move. Um, I didn't see exactly when he was hit. Did you guys pick up when? Yeah, Dizon he did was pick caught? him up before the Dorito. And Ronnie, uh, even though he continued with four motion because he's sprinting, uh, he did sort of pull his gum out. So I'm not sure if he shot Kirill, um, but penalty nonetheless. Yeah. So did they get the did they get the point? Did you see the thumbs up from the ref? Yep. Okay. So. Uh, it was a little scary for Houston Heat there with that major, but they had enough bodies to pull, so they escaped with the point in the pits right now with Houston Heat. So, Maddie, what you're saying is that's a good penalty on, on Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> sure. I mean, it was a risky move. Sometimes it's he necessary. got penalized. They still won the point. Results, that's what matters. Well, right now Tampa Bay, pretty simple point against uh, in the first one against the Saints. See if the Saints can stay alive. Ooh, and shoot a body. They do. They get a shot on Rainey Stanzik. Damage still doubling up that back center. Saints lose two. Yeah, it looks so, like just three now in the Dorito. Yep. Yeah, three on four. Oh, no, no. Another body coming off for the Saints is uh, D2 taking the walk. Jason Edwards is going to move up the field here on your screen. Number 13 for Tampa Bay gets up into the wedge. And he's going to win that gunfight. So, oh, yeah, minor penalty going to be assessed here on the Saints as Keith Brown is going to add some uh, some pain and some punishment to that <laughs> last player pumping his chest. Feeling good. He's playing good. Yep. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Two points in a row. He's kind of out here on his own, but he's like, fine. He's he's <laughs> He looked really good. I mean, He's elite. Yeah. You know, he's one of the best Nick players uh, of this generation. So it's not a huge show. But when it, it was funny, you see certain layouts and think of certain players and certain teams. Uh, and when I saw this layout, I was like, oh, it's going to be going for Mouse. Oh, it's going to be going for yeah. Keith. Yep. But that's why it's fun to see, like, Jonas having a really good tournament. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, I mean, Dynasty's proven that you can be in your early 40s and still be. Uh, the best team in the world. So if I'm a Jonah, I'm like, man, I could keep doing this for another 20 years. This is great. Yeah. Um, but eventually, we need some new heroes to, to emerge. Uh, so it is good to see. You know, yeah, well, sure. It's hard Keith, when the old of course. Don't go away. Mouse. Well, what's up? <laughs> it's it's hard, hard when the old guys don't go away. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got hey, You got to take the crown. I'm yep. just gonna give the crown up. Yeah, I talked to uh, Greenspan. He's like, I was like, I'm gonna keep doing this till I'm 50 if I can. I think he can. He's an anomaly. 
So jumping into this next point, Houston Heat, 11 minutes on the clock, up by one. And a body coming off, Fedorov taking the early walk again. Uh, Malloy's gonna get past the 50 yard line here for Legion. And he's definitely gonna have an angle on Dizon's back at D4. If he can pop up in that angle, he's a little blocked out from that spot. Scoot back a little. Tyler coming off as well too. Mishka taking the walk. There goes the shot on Dizon. So Legion answering with a little Alexander Burtnikoff getting it done in the snake. Yeah, Red Legion looking uh, pretty good this, this tournament. They are. Well, you know, they're, they're sitting at uh, their 17th overall, which is uh, absolutely terrible if you are uh, a team of the caliber, mm -hmm. the talent that Legion has. Yeah, so they were 19th at the first event, 11th, barely missing Sunday at second event, and then 15th at the last event where they went one and three in the prelims. They did have a nice win against Diesel, but we were just kind of scratching our heads all year long. Now, the answer is like talking to Jason Burns and Smotroff and Malloy, you know, Krill throughout the, like, hey, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know, we're really good. Um, like, well, even the best teams in the world still have to practice together. Mm -hmm. And so it was just hard uh, for them to get all their bodies over. And then when they did, to get them all playing on a regular basis together. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, this is a completely different story here at this event. They have looked like themselves. So I don't think they're going to be 17th after this tournament. It's just where. I mean, are they good enough to win right now? Maybe. I mean, they're looking really good. But this is kind of the, the test right here. You know, so if, if Legion can show up and be, because Heat is made every Sunday. The only, Heat's only been losing on Sunday by one point to the team that wins the tournament. And uh, they're overdue for a win, so they're hungry for it. So this is Legion's real big test right here. Mm. Right. Two to zero is the score here with damage. And the Saints, can the Saints live through the break? That's the question. Looks like they do on this one. Five bodies alive for the first time for the Saints. Blackie getting a spin, making the snake. He's been uh, in limited engagements out here. He's been pretty solid for him, for the most part. And he helped him win Texas last year, so he's earning his keep on damage. A little fill up the field. Well, Randy Stanza going to get to the wedge, try to get a shot as uh, Colin Cherry diving into snake one. Not able to do it, though. Cherry gets in alive. He's got a teammate behind him. No one in the back corner right now for, uh, for damage. As they have a good cross field spread, though. D2's hot. They also have the, the, the Temple back center. Snake one and the Rainy at the wedge. Colin Cherry, a little bit better field position here currently than uh, than Jared Lackey. But also this is damage paintball, right? You yeah. know, take some good spots. You have a lead. You know the Saints have to push forward. Well, let's see what you got, guys. Let's see what moves you can make. Colin Cherry getting shot, trying to get past that 50 or into it. So there's the first mistake. Rainey was all over the field. Started at the wedge, moved back to the temple. Now he's in the corner, controlling the wire. Yeah, back to Maddie saying, are they showing their hand? Uh, it's interesting. To see, you know, they had Blackie kind of solo on the snake. Keith, two points in a row solo on the snake with just Rainey in the wedge as sort of the two. So. Um, is he moving back because he's figuring it out or is he moving back because they can just win by doing whatever they want to do anyway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it, that's not an easy fill, but Rainey made it all the way back there. Piece of cake. Uh, going to get a little help with Edwards making his way to the door, but, and then it looks like Agent Smith at the tower. But yeah, they're just real calm in their spots, just talking it up, rolling guns. Would you say that damage is playing slow, Maddie? I, I think they're playing intelligent paintball yeah, right now. Controlled, Very controlled. Mm -hmm. and methodical. Methodical, yeah, it's another good one for it. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be a, a steady dose of the edges of a goggle, the tip of a barrel. And with the Saints, I, I'm just, I mean, they're not down by a lot. It's a two point spread, a lot of time to work with, but at a certain point in time, you're going to have to start make, trying to make another move here. Ch Cherry was trying. Brian and the Snake, he got clipped. Since then, no offense. Well, I'd like to see damage force the issue too, but why? You know, they don't really need to. Yep, they, these guys have zero desire They're, to move up the field. They're winning. This is how they win tournaments. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, Lackey's just gonna post up, carry an extra pot or two, you know? Right. Shoot a lot of paint, talk it up. 
I mean, they're in full control. Look, they're feeling no pressure. Very little pressure. Smith's chilling at the tower. He's he's not actively engaging, saving his bullets a little bit. Is that guy smoking a cigarette back there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do a great job of turning these points into six-minute points, not yeah. dropping a body and still winning the point, and the other team's in a horrible spot. Yeah, they're trying to keep us on schedule. Appreciate that, guys. So a little forward movement here for the Saints. And now Lackey, he's going to move up to the 50. Wedge guy does not know he moved up there. Yeah, he didn't touch the bunker, didn't telegraph his move, hasn't popped up quite yet. He is going to have an angle on that D2 player. Oh, missed a shot. And now he's broadcasted where he's at, picks him up. That's almost fine, though. Sucker one of these guys into trying to come bunker out Lackey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And draw some more guns on you. Why not? Saints corner guy's looking inside, which is probably not the best idea. Yeah, with the back center looking Doritos. Um, doesn't really need to help that way. Needs yeah, more so help his other guy. Doubling up on the job. Yeah, and you heard uh, story time from Tampa Bay. That's the... That's, That's the one-word version of, of the uh, thousand words that we all just threw at it here in the mm -hmm. past couple minutes. It was originated in a strange in strange days. Story time. Well, these are the original, uh, well, some of them, original yeah. strange players. Yeah, no one's even really shooting their guns right now because Tampa Bay doesn't have to. They got Lackey in a good spot, kind of has a little bit of bait. Um, Saints have filled into, uh, into Snake 1. Guy's out of bullets, though. There's no pods on his back. Lackey still loaded up. Lackey still has five pods. Rainey's got to be getting a little low. Jason loves to shoot. Oh, it's actually Jacob. Yeah. Just having some casual conversations. I mean, and damage isn't even... Also, again, you're up by two, as we've been saying, but they won their two yesterday. Not huge margins, but enough that they don't even really need to push up for margin either. I guess, yeah, you get three wins, it doesn't really matter. But occasionally a team will go three and one and have to play out of the wildcard round, uh, which Damage did just fine at the last event coming out of the wildcard round to win the tournament. Still, you don't want to be down there, though. Um, Damage actually lost. They were in the wildcard round two events in a row. They lost in Texas and took a tenth, but then with the first place at the next one. So Rainey filled the snake. Jacob filled the corner behind him. Looks like one of them is getting out a Kindle and reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> Saints got to do something. Can't do nothing. Yeah, and it's a good morale boost when you're on a team. I've been, you know, I've been in this situation where you're on paper not supposed to beat a team, uh, and it's good for morale to come out and just see what you can do against a team that you know everyone thinks that you can't compete with. You know, yeah. it's it's. It's for the future, right? Yeah, it's it's also a fun test, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of what this game is all about. Ooh, uh, Saints lost to the burrito guy. Yeah, tough gunfight loss. Rainy. Rainy. Yeah, Rainy getting a little bit closer. Moving to that inside spot, right by Snake 2. Ooh, nice. that was nasty. That was crisp. <laughs> yeah. a little kill for, uh, for Rainy as soon as the snake player checked off inside. Goggled him up. And now a desperation move outside for Manners. It's not that back center, but this is just perfect damage paintball. Yep. We talked about how the Hurricanes like to smother teams. Damage, yeah, they are. that's where the Hurricanes learned it from. <laughs> they just smother you. You get so frustrating because you feel like you can't do anything. Yeah. Oh, that guy's on that zone. God, I really need to make this move. Try to make it through, shoot ya. They just lost three gunfights in a row. Yeah, Saints going to be shaking their heads. Let's listen in real quick here. Pits with damage. It is always funny. We'll have guys come up here to do commentary sometimes and forget they're not in the pits. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, man, I was at the Apple, and then California was shooting at me. And I was like, Godzilla, Godzilla. And I'm like, hey, no one knows what you're talking about right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
I mean, I love your enthusiasm, but no one has any idea which yeah, your bunkers you're talking about. So body coming off early here for Legion, and it is Karzlev. Right now, it's Karzlev and Malloy would probably be, those are the two guys you have to shoot. So step one, good to go here for Houston. And they get Connor Kelly in the snake. He looked real good yesterday. He didn't really make, I don't even think, I can't remember a mistake that Connor Kelly made yesterday, to be honest. Did Chad get a spin, George, yesterday or no? No, he, no. He had, he's still dealing with an injury. Yep. Uh, he was injured on Sunday at the last event, and Connor Kelly played for him, uh, did pretty well there. Yeah, I mean, Houston Heat has only been losing on Sunday by one point, and it's typically to the team that, that wins the event. Connor's going to get jiggy here in a sec. I mean, yep. that's, this is when paintball's sweet. You're just in there, snake. Later, alligator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is when paintball is sweet. That's why we call those free kills. I yep. mean, he did the he did the work and crawled down there, but they're not looking at you. You just get to your eyes get like saucer plates. You're like, oh, this one's gonna be fun. Where yep. do I want to shoot this guy? I can't believe they didn't see Connor. Those both those guys are seven feet tall. Connor's a little guy though. Yeah, well played. I mean, again, Connor Kelly has been lights out for him in the snake. And Fedorov has had some really solid points, too, but he's also died early way more than Connor. Now, it, it is Fedorov, so I'm kind of wondering on Sunday who Todd's going to be going with. Do you go with the the rookie who's, uh, who's, who's kind of hitting on all cylinders, or do you go with the legend that's won tournament after tournament after tournament for going on, like, 15 years? That's going to be a tough call for Todd because anytime you got Fedorov out there, and just because... You know, you may catch a couple, and you know, maybe you have one rough game, but that doesn't mean you couldn't go off and shoot everyone and win the MVP tomorrow. Exactly. There's a big difference between a good paintball player and a paintball player that knows how to win championships. So it looks like we have some info uh, from Lauren. Lauren, what do you got for, uh, from, uh, for us? Yeah, Damage just has some of the best communication out here this weekend so far. As we've seen, a lot of teams are having a hard time finding the bodies on the field. Rainey Stanzik and Jared Lackey in that last point were having full-on conversations, playing very patiently and trying to find those bodies together before making any moves. Yeah, that's what it sounded like from up here. <laughs> Where are we eating tonight? Oh, man, I don't know. I feel like a steak. What do you feel like? I think it's seafood. So, <laughs> five minutes on the clock, three-point lead for... Tampa Bay. Yeah, and that's the difference between talking and communicating, right? It's, it's one thing to yell spots till you're blue in the face. Are your other guys hearing that? Are, they, are you connecting with your players? So when you see teams have conversations about what to do, it's it you know it just makes you calm as a player you know, as a, and as a team, you know. Yeah, it feels different too when you have someone yelling at you versus when you have someone talking to you. Yeah. And the, also a crucial part of the communication is listening, too. Yeah. It's because you're talking. Sometimes the talking is stopping you from listening. Mm -hmm. So another body coming off for the Saints. Uh, well, actually, just one. They have four bodies alive. No one in the snake. They're going to go to the Aztec insert bunker snake side from the door. They have the back corner, the Landry Logistics. New sponsor here. We're going to have uh, Logan Landry actually coming up here, calling a game in a bit. Former pro player. Scurry out for damage, and it looks like Jason is going to make it clean to get out behind Keith. Yeah, crucial fill for Jason. He's a huge gunfighter, and he's going to be able to help control in front of Keith. I used to love fields like this when you have a nice stand-up in the backfield. Oh, yeah. Whether you're the front guy or the back guy, I mean, yeah, as a back player, it's going to be an interesting, fun weekend because you're going to be a gunfight all tournament long. But you can, you're, if you're if you're on, if you're dialed, you really can help your team from that spot. And if you're a front player, having a, a, a good guy back behind you, he can see the whole field, be able to talk to you, help joystick you up, and give you the information you need. It's much harder to play a spot where you're always shooting a blind, you can't really see your mirror. You're playing a stream of paint, not really him. Still trying to keep the communication going. Yeah, and corners like that will put players in a situation where you know you've got to got to hold the wire you have to fight with your guy you can't just hide i mean there's value in staying alive but there's also a lot of value in making sure they're not crawling down this huge snake yeah absolutely well saints are going to commit here on to damages side of the field but he gets diced up a couple shots in his arm forced to take the walk from that tower yep. damage is just in full control Yeah, kind of like we said, just really not showing much. Very traditional breakouts. 
getting to a spot that any team would take. Okay, let's get D2, snake one. Shoot zones. And then now, since they've softened up the line a bit, ooh, ooh. wow, a little bit of a trip and fall here for Keith Brown. And Didn't know where he was. Oh, it is going to be a major assessed on Keith Brown. And that's going to pull out Jason. They still have two more bodies to pull, so. He, and I guess he didn't get a shot in on Colin Cherry, so it's going to be a two-on-one right now. And then poor Colin, not much he could do in that situation. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, if I was Joey, I'd go over and be like, Keith, you do not need to be diving over the snake in a game that yeah, we have full control. Oh, I need you healthy. tomorrow, bro, okay? We don't need another snake player in this event going down. Yeah, I mean, we, we came into the event, no Chad George. And then uh, uh, and then it looked like Billy went down. Uh, that was a cramp. It was a cramp. I was, Yeah, I was okay. just going to say, let everyone know, Billy Bernacci is fine. As soon as I saw him, I went over there, I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, it's, it's just a cramp. Just a cramp. I just needed. I just needed a massage. A field like this, with a snake like this, and you think of the legendary matchups in the snake. You yeah. think of, you know, you think of Billy, and you think of Chad, and, and you think of Mouse, yeah, and, and Keith, like, and but, Keith. But you want to see those guys go head to head exactly. against each other. So yeah, no Chad George, and then Mouse is dealing with some sort of back issue, and we got Keith flying over in a crazy move that he doesn't <laughs> necessarily. It looked great, Keith. You look super fast and athletic, but did not need to make that move, brother. Sometimes you got to go for the glory, you know. I mean, again, highly entertaining. And I'm, as a paintball fan, I'm glad he did it. But as Keith's friend and knowing what jo if Joey were up here right now, he'd, he'd be like, Keith, what are you doing? Yeah. Is Urena healthy? No, he's not even here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't so another guy that was here. Okay. Yeah. He's a, a kind of a bad groin pole. And those are pesky injuries. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, we're down, which is just frustrating. It's like the paintball gods. We finally get an awesome ladder snake where we could see, you know, a fixed bayonets trench warfare over here and some of the best that we have that play the one. But then, hey, next man up, right? You know, Harrison Fry is playing the one pretty well. Uh, he had a, 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 well, everyone in Dynasty had a good day yesterday, but he looked pretty good in there. So it's going to give some opportunities for some, uh, to see some new players. So back with Fedorov on the snake here. I want to see if Joey... Yells at Keith. Oh, maybe he already did it. Let's assume he did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a much different story here. Houston Heat up by one. Number 92 there on your screen, cars left. He's the guy to shoot on Houston Heat. Uh, and then Burtnikoff in the gray beanie or uh, brown beanie here heading. Ooh, he's got jumped the gun a little bit here. Mm, good break for Heat. They're going to get Ryan Moorhead on a delay all the way up into D3 if he makes it clean. Better off making the corner and getting clipped, wrapping right away, unfortunately. Well, Heat lets. Ooh, Heat losing Ronnie Dizon and Mishka very quickly. Where did those kills come from? I think Snake. Is he at the. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's the Tiger King and the Snake. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that was beautiful. He so got he there. ran Wait. through and he shot mm, three, four, four pack, three pack, something. Got the first two for sure. I think he got that last kill. Regardless, that was a very quick point there for number thirty-three. Yeah, Joey calls him the Tiger King because he wears that leopard print. I mean, speaking of assists, we're talking earlier about how they, how do they have the roster they have and, and underperform, you know. A, last couple tournaments but then you have we're calling him the the, the leopard king you're saying the but like well he's I, calling the tiger king tiger yeah, leopard king, king. Tiger we go, king. Yeah, we yeah. go leopard king too it's a little bit more of a leopard print but that system like how many great players have you seen them bring up from you know no one's ever seen them before to now they're super elite you know i think that system's done it more than any other so i think maybe that's could be contributing to them having a better tournament as you have these newer guys that are contributing at a high level well we just talked about um how fun it was going to be to watch these snake elite players throw down, right? Well, one of the elite snake players we don't have here is Leo Smotrov. And we just talked about, and he's only playing for Legion. Uh, but next, like we just said, next man up, right? And Kuzmin, AKA Tiger King, Lion King, Leopard King, there he is right there, with got the glorious mountain man beard. Yeah, he's got a mane. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Kuzmin's having a tournament. And so, next man up. Who, okay, Smotrov can't be here. We still need someone to play the one in the snake. Malloy can't do it every single point because we would rather have Malloy play the two. Damage loses one off the break going to the snake. 
Saints just running up the field. Well, with 22 seconds left, trying to win one for Pride. Still have a body left alive at that Goose Island brick, but there's Tampa Bay, undaunted and untouched, four bodies in the backfield. Here comes Colin Cherry, he's gonna roll some dice. Gets hit at the last second of regulation time, and so the Saints are gonna get shut out, and Tampa Bay damage as advertised here. Three and O, oh, looking pretty good. But 12 o'clock, gonna be taking on the also undefeated Hurricanes for Battle of Supremacy in that division. All right, Drew, who's got this next point, Legion or Heat? Uh, I would say momentum's, I mean, definitely on Legion side after that last point. I'm gonna go with, uh, they put Connor back in, so I'm gonna go with them just because if I were in Connor's shoes, I'd be very excited to prove myself getting that snake and, and, and win the point, yeah. so. And again, I feel like, I don't I don't think they've won every point. I'm gonna have to go back and watch, but I feel like every time I've seen Connor Kelly take the field, he's been doing it kind of like Jonah, you know? Just yeah. Playing really, really well in the snake. And they're gonna shoot a body on the break here as they get a shot in on Kuzmin. So that's a, that's a big kill right now. Mm -hmm. So first attacker, not a problem anymore, but then Malloy gonna filter in and get right into snake one. Heat not going to the snake on the break, but staying alive. See if Connor answers and gets in the snake with him. This is where that red, that red Legion uh, cross gun from the tower. Oh, he just got in the snake, but that's when that is effective. Yeah, so Connor Kelly getting into snake one here for Heat. And, almost got oh, clipped. Oh, yeah. Isaac almost got clipped trying to get into snake two, but he makes it clean, so he's mirrored up with Malloy. Oh, and Malloy gets a crossfield kill. Pretty sure that broke. Yeah, crossfield kill on Dizon. So a four on four situation here. Even on the body count. Two to two is the score. 638 in regulation. And a big fill from Tyler Harmon trying to get out to the uh, Landry Logistics back bunker here on the snake side and he makes it clean. That's exactly what Connor needs to go to work. Hey, that's a great gun to ha have behind you because Tyler's a great gun battler, um, great communicator. So having him behind you in the snake's a good uh, feeling. That's a good point, Drew. I, this is been talking about this layout when I saw the layout and I saw that bunker and where it was. I'm like, ooh, Tyler Harmon. That's, yep. This is going to be a good one for Tyler Harmon. And Tyler Harmon, last year when we did the all star voting, um, was uh, one and two with him and Ryan Greenspan. And that was all voted on by the coaches. I had a vote too. So it was me and all the coaches voted. And no surprise there, right? Mm -hmm. With Tyler Harmon. Connor in a tough position to, to kind of snapshot from on his belly. Yeah, when those knuckles, like like we were saying, aren't directly down a line, it makes uh, you know battling down the wire a little, you know, a little unorthodox. Yeah, he could not possibly get any lower. Doesn't have to worry about the. Um, we've seen some guys get shot through that crack right there, but he's gonna pop up and try to establish lane on that D side. Uh, Legion out it outside D three. Oh, shoots the Dorito guy out. Good job, Connor. Yeah, and that's Karslev. So that's the big weapon on the D side for Legions. Huge kill for Connor Kelly. Establishes the lane. He knows that Malloy's in front of him. You think he knows exactly that he's mirrored up with them? They haven't. I don't think they've actually had a, a you know a direct engagement yet. So I'm not sure if he knows exactly what knuckle he's in. And I don't think he's shot at Ty Malloy's shot at Tyler either. So, but now Connor has hit the bunker a decent amount. So I'm wondering, Malloy, they should know where Connor is. Yeah, his Malloy's body language for a, a while now has been sort of posted on Connor to bunker him, not really down the wire. Yeah, he's he's kind of waiting for that guy to. There he goes. There he goes. Okay, now they know they're there. That's their first real engagement, as we were just saying. Ooh, did Connor get clipped cross field? Kind of got bounced. Yeah, Connor feeling the pincher. He needs to be careful, and he has Tyler over him. But Tyler has to load. But there's no one to help Malloy. It's just Malloy over here. Sergey's at the door, totally committed to the D side. Um, the guy that's helping Malloy is actually D2. Mm -hmm. And D2 has been putting, I think that's Kirill, putting quite a bit of pressure here on Connor. And we kind of just posted up on this lane, waiting to see if Connor wants to try to make a move on Malloy. Be nice to see Tyler and Connor just sort of bully Malloy here as best they can to get Connor closer to Malloy, you know? Yeah. Because if, well, 
Well, that's a mistake here from Connor Kelly. And Tyler, as soon as he sees Connor die, filters right into the snake. So that's a smart move. And I don't think Malloy knows he's there. So if Malloy headjacks down this side. Oh. So just. So he's going to fight his way up as uh, Mishka Kiesnev is going to make his move to the Goose Island brick. Tyler up and over the top. Three. 26 to go here. Tied up two to two. Couldn't ask for a closer match. This is what we thought we were gonna see. Oh, and Malloy head checks towards the center and gets shot by his former teammate Mishka. That was a beautiful move and shot from Mishka. That gives Tyler Harmon control of the snake. Sergey's in a real Making tough spot. Kirill in the 50 Dorito though, and I don't know if he knows. There he goes. Might be, okay, two on one. And yeah, Sergey again, just in a really tough position. But Tyler Harmon owning that snake. And good job by Ryan Moorhead staying alive through all that chaos. So the combo of Moorhead and Harmon gonna give Houston Heat the lead. Also Mishka in there too, because he got the crucial kill on Malloy. Called it, Drew. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't spot the hero, but I spotted the win, so there we go. We're in the pits right now with Houston Heat. And you see the way Tyler gets into that snake, snake tooth, playing comfortable, over the top, communicating with Mishka, letting him know the snake's hot, and then that lets Mishka be more comfortable, clip Malloy, and win the point. Yeah. So high level paintball, we're watching now. Oh, shout out to Chris Odom. He's like a, just a super fan, loves the game of paintball. Have you met him yet? Uh, I've actually run into him a few times playing uh, games online. He plays Call of Duty, I've ran into him a couple times, but he's a super nice guy. Yeah, super nice guy. Loves paintball. Yeah, so Houston Heat, and we are in uh, full X ball here. So, yeah, so Drew, uh, Paintball Vault, new project that you launched. Big fan. Uh, talk to me about the, uh, you know, the mindset behind the creation of Paintball Vault. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think one thing I didn't kind of touch on earlier was just how much easier and convenient it makes you know selling gear it's you know you can list your gear for free um, buyers can come on and purchase it with you know method like you know they can finance it they can buy it with a credit card so things that you would have to hoops you'd have to jump through to sell gear before are just made a lot easier or, or just non-existent right so you you know i post my stuff up for sale and someone purchases it that way and all i have to do is put a label on the box that paintball vault provides and it's out the door you know so it makes it super easy Plus, you're getting your, your gear out on a marketplace that's, you know, built for paintball. So it's all paintball stuff. It's, you know, you know, you go look at the categories and it's like filtered by, you know, barrel type and gun type and things like that that just aren't around on the Internet, you know. So no, it's, it's one of those when you told me about it before it was actually a thing. It was I was like, that's genius. How is that? No one thought of this before. Those are always like Karl Markowski and his tank tool. I'm like, how did no one think of this before? <laughs> this is this is perfect. This, and I, need, this needed to exist. So jumping into this one here, very close match. It's Houston Heat, two minutes and 34 seconds left trying to hold Legion off. But instead, they're throwing haymakers over on that D side with Ryan Moorhead eating people up. Two bodies coming off for Legion on that D side. Connor Kelly getting into the snake here, but he lost to Tyler. But then Connor gets eaten up. So the tables have turned. That back center still uh, alive here for Houston Heat, trying to slow the attack in this snake. Ryan Moorhead's all the way on to their side, and he's going to get the shot in on Kirill. So... Ryan Moore trying to put the team on his back over on that D side. Malloy has to push back, and then he gets shot as well, too. So great job by Moorhead with a broadsword over there. And then Ronnie Dizon in the mix as well, too. And uh, good job. I think that was Mishka in the back center as the only body really holding off this attack from Malloy on the snake side. Yeah, that was great. I don't think I could have pr predicted that pace of that point, too, given that Heat was up a point and seeing some of the moves that were made. But that was... Uh... Well, that's a wild one. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, typically when you have the lead, you're gonna play a little bit more tentative, a little bit. Uh, but no, hey, Ryan Moore's like, I oh, know I'm gonna get to the 50 and put a guy in, make a move, shoot a couple bodies, in a big moment. So now they're up by two, and he's gonna have to take a knee. Yeah, definitely expended some energy there. But a very well played point, and then Dizon was supporting behind him, and then a tip of the hat in respect to Mishka holding the line from that back center. But yeah, typically not what you're gonna see when you got a lead. Not a uh, move to the 50 in, but that was, it's unexpected. You know, we are playing chess out here, not checkers. And yep. 
sure Legion wasn't expecting Moorhead to be in their 50 in 10 seconds. So you got one side, you can try to draw out that two minutes, but now you put them in a position to be down by two with two minutes, so you know you're forcing them to have two one-minute points, which is a, you know, not an easy thing. I'm also wondering, and let me know if you guys saw it, but do you think that was a set play or a read and react for Moorhead? It looked like read and react. Yeah, it was hard to, hard to tell. That plus how Connor played the snake side, sort of getting in and just kind of running down, it seemed, it almost, it looked like a quick point, right? I don't know. That's why, that's why I had to ask, because I was kind of wondering in my head as I was, like, I wonder if that was a play, a set play, or if that was just a good read for Moorhead. Yeah, got to spin Moorhead again. Yep. Dizon's had a really good tournament for him, too. I mean, it's Houston Heat, multiple-time world champs. They do not like to change their roster up much. Um, Devin Stewart went over to Energy. Looks like a timeout being called here. Uh, but then the last player that move they made uh, had Nico Hyde for a while. He left. Uh, picking up Connor in the offseason and then Tyler a few years ago. But Houston, he just does not really like to change their roster very much. Well, that's a proven formula, right? Like, get your guys gelling, get them connecting, build that camaraderie, and that that helps win tournaments. Yeah, and they pay their guys. So that's a team a lot of people want to play for. Remember, I was playing golf with Randy Smith one time, the owner of the team, who's a straight shooter. And uh, he this was after they'd won two World Cups in a row. And he's like, man, I'm getting all these calls. from, And these are good players he's talking about. And he's like, I mean, I just don't feel like I need to change anything up. Like, yeah, it would be cool to have this guy, but, you know, we want a certain amount of money and this and that, but it's also everything's working. I don't want to mess that up. And he's like, I mean, would you pick anybody up if you were me? And I'm like, Randy, you don't need anybody. You just won two World Cups in a row. Dude. Right. Yeah. So it ain't broke. I mean, if you want to, sure. Like, yeah, you could argue, I could argue it the other way. This guy will make your team better maybe on paper. But as we well know, just the names on the backs alone do not make a, you know, an elite team. Certainly. Yeah, if anything, the years they've tried that, it hasn't worked out for them, vice versa. Oh, so now it looks like Legion's going to be pushing the issue from that D side. Which they must do, right? And then Heat's slowing it down a little bit here. Because they can. And even though Heat has this core, um, you know, coming to an event, you see Tyler get consistent spins. You see Chad George get consistent spins. But really, there's, you know, a lot of their lineup is really who's playing the best at that moment. So yeah. while they have a core, you never really know who's going to be their, their starting five. Yeah. And that's kind of the way it should be, right? Yeah. You know, you have a deep enough roster. You have options. Kind of like with Infamous right now. Who is good? If, if you have to go to a starting five, who would it be? I don't know. Kind of tough to call at this point. Uh, and then with Houston Heat, kind of caught Kelly back into the snake here and Ryan Moorhead with this two-point lead trying to protect. Just a minute left to go. So, I mean, Legion is going to have to push the issue. But also, you know, Legion's sitting undefeated right now. They can they can drop this game. It's close on the margin. Um, they're going to be in Sunday no matter what. Ideally, you'd like to have the highest point spread you can uh, so you don't have to play in a wild card round potentially. Because sometimes you will go 3-1 and one and be stuck in that wild card round. 40 seconds here. Legion looks like they're dinked out the back center. And they got to move a little bit quicker here. 30 seconds. Yeah, so Sergey running to his death, but of course, you know, why not? You're in Sunday no matter what. Might as well try to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So just 15 seconds now left. Who's been in the snake? He gets blasted. It looks like he traded with Connor Kelly. Tyler Harmon still alive back on a bunker. Moorhead's going to launch. Runs into a gun. Not going to matter, though, as Dizon connects on his shot as time expires. So give it another 10 seconds. Houston Heat would have put yet another point on the board, but they answered the call. Houston Heat remains undefeated. Finally, somebody stepped up to beat Legion. Legion ends up going 3-1. and one. Heat with one more game to play. Should be the noon set, taking on LA Infamous. So that's going to be a fun one to watch because uh, Infamous... Would love to get that win. Yeah. yeah. If you can beat Heat right now, you instantly become a favorite. And that's a must win for Infamous, too. Yeah, yeah. and so then that makes it really fun to watch. Coming up next here, going to be AC Diesel. They're in a must win situation. They're sitting at one and two, taking on Columbus Level, who has a chance if they can step up and be Diesel. So this is a crucial Sunday implication set. And then the Aftermath and Bears are going to be playing one for Pride because they're both sitting at 0 and 3. So that is the uh, setting of the stage here for this next battle. 
on center court 2023 NXL Windy City Major. Drew Templeton, Paintball Vault. Download the app. It's really cool. Uh, get a chance to, uh, you can show off your stuff, sell your stuff. It's uh, something that needed to exist. We're going to continue to talk about this this weekend. And also check out Paintball Nerds, Isaac Barrow. Up here helping me call some sets. We'll be right back. Stick with us here on Go Sports.